Thank you. If you have your phone, will you please put it on silent? Please. The meeting is now called to order, and uh, I will left all the stay our allegiance to the flag. While we remain standing, I will call on. I said, while we remain standing, I will let all the sing and call on someone to lead a song. So, Steve, you want to lead a song? <laughs> Steve Pazos. Steve Green to do the invocation. You want me to stand up? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of what to say today for the invocation. I came up, I thought I should be brief, get to the point. But what is my point? Well, as I began to reflect now on my 72 years on the planet Earth, actually today, and as to have spent 40 of those years in Rotary, I do give thanks to the Rotary Club. Certainly God has been good in watching over me, and I thank Rotary for having taught me practically every good thing that I try to do. I will close with thanking every one of you for not only being Rotarians, but in your own way, help keeping me going as well as our Brockton Rotary Club. Thank you, amen. amen. Excuse me. <clears throat> We're going to start while you have your lunch. Hello? I can hit the bell if you want. I just need your attention while you enjoy your lunch. Uh, I would like to say thank you to Steve, Tim, uh, Peter, and uh, Tina for the invocation, the greeter, and uh, Queen Sales. And Tina, can we put our hands together for them? Um, I would like to ask for a moment of silence. Uh, our member Joe Maku brought up past. So if you can just give a moment of silence, that would be good. Thank you. Do we have any visiting Rotarians here today? Mark. Hi folks, nice to see everybody. I'm visiting from Bridgewater, but I always feel like I'm in home. Thank you. Anyone else? Guest. You can see uh, Richard, President Richard told us last week that he was traveling out of state, and that's why 
he's not here, and he asked me to say thank you to Bill, the committee that working on the pancake breakfast, and also all the volunteers. As we all know, coming Saturday, we ask asking everyone that can make it to come and support. It's a water cost, as we all know. Um, it's a team effort, so I hope everyone can make it on Saturday. Uh, Bill, do you still want to add anything, or are you all set? I'm good, unless there's any questions, I'm good. Tina? Good. So it seems like everything is all together. <laughs> the chef will be there at 6 o'clock on the line. Well, minutes, hour, so what I'm hearing is that 6 a.m. is the time to start. We also received an uh, email from the district governor elect. Uh, it's Steve Abra and his wife will be coming to visit the club on April 25th. So we are asking everyone if you can come and invite others. He asked to speak to the club. And um, I will ask Elaine to talk about the rookies, the... the well, as you know, maybe don't know, about 10 years ago, I started something called the Rookie Project. And when new members join, they would say, well, how long do I have to be a rookie? How long do I have to wear this red badge? And I would say, not until we had a rookie event. Well, we're finally going to have that rookie event. And I'm hoping that each and every one of you will not only join us, but will bring a prospective Rotarian with you and hopefully encourage your significant other partner or spouse to join you as well, because this is going to be a fun evening in fellowship. It's on Thursday, May 16th, from 6 to 8, Julian. Okay, and it's going to be at the Shoveltown Brewery. There is a sign-up sheet on everybody's table. It will be there every week. Please sign your name if you're planning on coming. If you know now who you're bringing as a guest, please put that person's name in. This is a very exciting expensive event. Zero. Your cost is zero. Thanks to Serve Pro, who's underwriting the event, and I think it was very generous of our brand new member, uh, Victor Silva, to go to his company. There will be um, hors d'oeuvres and a lot of fun. There'll be a tour of the brewery and everybody will be responsible for whatever they wish to drink. Yes. Is there free beer? <laughs> no, I just said. No <laughs> beer. Is that what it's going to take? I will buy you your first beer. Is there free beer? Please look for that sign up sheet on your table. And let's give the rookies a round of applause for doing this for us. Um, we are now about to hear <coughs> something that I much more kind of have an interest, which is about stress management. And uh, I do have the privilege and honor to welcome Joanne, who's young, who is not a stranger to us. She's a public speaker. And... Uh, an author, and also a coach. So I would like for us to give our Rotary welcome to Joanne Woods. Can I take this out? Oh, here we go. Good afternoon, amazing Rotarians. I'm so happy to be amongst your presence. I really am. So 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about my vocational background, which kind of loops back to why I'm here. But I really am grateful to be part of this Rotary Club. I've met some amazing people. People who I see are making a difference in the world. People who I see are doing things for others, lifting others up. It's really inspiring for me to come to the meetings. And I'm truly grateful to be part of this organization with each of you. So to introduce myself, I've been a Rotarian too, almost three years. And I asked Elaine last week, when do I not have to be a Rotarian anymore, a rookie? And she said, once the rookie project is complete. So that will be May 16th. I am a small town girl from a very small town world. I grew up in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, and it was a fishbowl world. There was nothing I could do in that town that wouldn't get back to my parents. So they were all involved in everything. And my goal and dream was to get out of Bridgewater, Mass, and go off into some big city. So I have two older brothers, and they both made the escape to Las Vegas. So that was always an option I could get to Las Vegas. But I was the youngest daughter and very close with my parents. So I went to Bridgewater State College. I worked at the town offices in Bridgewater. And I worked at the only video store in Bridgewater. So very small world, right? After I graduated Bridgewater in 1993, I wanted to continue my dream of getting out of Bridgewater. So I did. I moved to the big city of Quincy, Massachusetts. Woo! So while I was at Bridgewater State, I was in the public speaking and debating team. And my first job out of school was as a presenter for a very small college in Boston. So I did about 20 to 30 presentations a week to students about the school. It was great. And then I moved on from that to become a college admissions rep. That was for, I was a college admissions rep there, but this was a little more in detail. So I did that, my speaking was still part of what I was doing. And then I got into sales. Accidentally, I fell into sales. I was leaving my job in admissions and trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my life, and I got a job at Jordan's Furniture. There's nothing about me that can sell anything. I am not a salesperson at all, nothing. But when I worked at Jordan's Furniture, it was the highlight of their time. There was no other furniture stores, so all I did was show up every day and write sales. I wasn't doing anything except for saying hi to customers. So I had a great sales job there, and then I went on to work at another place. I had a job at Ralph Lauren Fragrances, which was the most amazing job. When I was looking back on this, thinking about this last night, I'm like, I have lived a charmed life. I truly have, and I've been through a, like, a midlife crisis in the last probably seven months. So looking at my life in perspective last night, it's like, wow, I really, things always work out as they will for you too. And you can probably look at your own life and see, wow, things will always work out. So I went to my job at Ralph Lauren Fragrances. I was still living in Quincy. And this job, think about this, I'm 25 years old. We went to our sales meetings at the Ritz Carlton in Palm Springs. We went to polo matches with celebrities. I got a flight to New York every week. A car service picked me up. I went to the office and I went home. It was amazing, but I didn't really recognize how amazing that was at the time. I still wanted bigger, so I went into pharmaceutical sales. Short-lived, done with that. Then, after that, I was interviewing with a girl for a job, and she said, I think you'd be great for this job my dad has in his company. Met her dad, and then I started working there. That was another sales job for a company called Bright Smile. So I did that for a couple years, and then I decided students are my people. They've always been my people. I wanted to, I've always taught CCD or worked with them in some capacity. So I went back to school, and I got my master's degree, and I became a high school guidance counselor. And that was terrible. Terrible. Yeah, because I was this world changer. I want to help students. I want to be there with them. I really want to help them be the best person they can be. Two weeks into the job, I'm in an IEP meeting, agreed with everybody there. Yeah, yeah. No. I got into groupthink so fast because in a school system, you can really not, it's hard to affect change. You can't help the students in the way you want to. You can't really, I remember one of my students' mothers passed away. And this was my second year as a guidance counselor. And it's just, the school is not equipped to handle those kind of things that happen. It's just, it's just the way it is. So anyway, done with that. My son shows up in 2007. I leave my job on maternity leave. And then a job, my very first job, the same school becomes open in my territory. And 
Boston, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. So I go back to becoming an admissions rep, and that's where I was for the last five years. I was an admissions rep for a college called Bay State College. Another amazing job. My boss was incredible. I worked from home and traveled out to all the schools doing presentations, talking to students and guidance counselors. And then I decided that I was going to take, that's another thing I left out is since 2004, I've had a holistic healing practice. So I do energy work, I do Reiki counseling, anything related to spiritual energy work I do. And I've always done that part time. So I decided that I was going to put it all together full time, speak, do all my spiritual energy work, counseling, and I was going to do my own business. So here I am now. It's been three years, but the last six months I've been thinking, not sure. I'm not sure if this is really what I should be doing. I'm not sure if I made the right decision. So I've been kind of going through that whole little bit of a midlife crisis until I went through my vocational program last night. And last week, I spoke to the students at Southeastern Regional. That's where I was a guidance counselor, and I spoke to them about stress. And after I left that presentation, I said, this is what I'm meant to do. This is what people need. People need to understand that there's a different way to look at their lives, a different way to be, so you can create your own life. You can be happy today. How many of you enjoy coming here to Rotary? Everybody! Why do you enjoy coming here? Fellowship. Yeah. Yeah, because honestly, Brian Dukas, you are totally remind me of my two brothers. But you He's that man. You bring up the energy every week with your jokes and your laughing. It's hilarious. Is he not funny? And everybody laughs and then someone else adds something else. So the energy in the room shifts. Oh, I forgot to tell everybody why I didn't get to my dream to leave this area. Back to that. So I wanted to get out of here. I never wanted to leave my parents. I was, again, very close to them. But in 1999, they decided they were going to retire to Florida. Phil Callahan put their house on the market, and I was like, here's my escape room. <laughs> but the job that I got, and I got a job right at the same time. The company I was working for was in California, so I was ready to go wherever I needed to be, even though I was hired for the Boston position. But then, in 1998, I met this guy. His name was Evan Young. He was a really nice guy. I didn't like that. He was too nice. I was on to other things. So in 1999, I saw Evan Young again, and I said, did you pass the bar? And he said, yes. And I said, we should start dating. So from 1999, I was on my way to getting out of Dodge. I met Evan Young, and here I am now. In the funny thing about me being here, take Bridgewater, and here I am. I just moved my life over to Brockton. Evan Young's parents know everybody. Evan Young knows everybody. So here I am in the same situation. But it's nice to be part of such a nice community. So. Now I'm going to have you guys, one thing I wanted to have you learn today, one thing I wanted to do with everybody, I did this here once three years ago. I wanted to do my affirmation walk to help you all feel lifted. But I want to teach you a couple things too. How many of you have your own business? Okay. How many of you have a mission statement for your business or a vision? Okay. Do you review it daily? No. So you want to just keep in mind, I, I put out some little things on the table, but this isn't really going by that, but one thing you can do each and every day is set your intention for the day that you want to have, especially with your business, right? Because you are responsible for making that business happen. And keep your vision in front of you. So if you have, say, a small printing company, and you want it to be a certain thing, you want to keep that vision right in front of you. Or if you have certain clients that you want to go to, you want to get into a different company, or you want to get out there in a different way, keep that vision clear. Just like I had to put my pictures up of speaking to students. I just did that last week because I have other things up there, but I thought, that's really what I want to be doing all the time, is speaking to students. So keeping in your vision the vision of what you want to be doing. And having an intention for every day. Even if you're just going to be home doing your own thing, having an intention of what you want to do that day. Does anyone do that yet, have an intention for their day? Do you notice when you have your intention, it starts a little bit easier? Okay, good. And keeping that vision always in your mind, that's going to get you to where you want to be. It's going to keep your goals heading towards that. 
<clears throat> One other thing you can do to start every day in a good place is come up with a gratitude practice. But what I'm going to ask you to do today is if you can just tell the people around you some of the things that you're grateful for about them. So most of you know each other. Just tell somebody at your table something that you're grateful for about them. Something that maybe they've done for you or... <clears throat> way to calm yourself down if you're stressed out you're in your office or just got a lot going on in your car it's a really easy simple and effective way to calm down your whole parasympathetic nervous system so that is my big takeaway today because I want to have time to do this with you this is what I do at the end of every presentation I do this affirmation walk and last year I was speaking in Dallas to a Japanese company I was speaking to them on leadership and Japanese people are a little more reserved than American people. So here I come with my big words and songs we're singing. <laughs> I say to the HR person who hired me, I don't think I should do the affirmation walk. And she said, you're doing it. So I had this line of Japanese engineer men, didn't know what, they were scared. And I had to do the affirmation walk with them, but it worked out great because they felt better after. So everybody, I want to leave you today lifted. I want you to feel ready to take on your day, and I want you to feel inspired. We're going to start with Bill Calhoun. 
He's going to come right down the middle, and you're going to say your affirmation into his ear, and you're going to say his name first. It has to be the name first and then the affirmation. And if you feel good, give him a little, like, rub on the back, a little pat on the back. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. No, no pats on the butt, Brian. Nice. Every one of them? I'm listening to every one of these? Yeah, you're just going to go down. Yeah, everybody's going to say their affirmation to you. Both sides? Yep, you're just going to take a step in, everybody. Step in. Yeah. This is like a hot oven. <laughs> it's like football all over again. Yes. And you're going to close your eyes. We, you're an amazing father and a really good man. Is that the head I'm relaxed. <laughs> Brian, she's the best in others. That's a good one. Yeah, the best one. <laughs> 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 I've quarantined myself. We're having kids go to a screening. My bunny guard has license. Yes, dear. Oh, nice. Thank you.